Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We welcome you to this online worship service for our St. James community, and we are glad you chose to worship with us today. As we unite our hearts and minds in worship, there are some ministry opportunities we are, want to be sure you are aware of. Last week, we had to cancel our packing event for uh, Trinity Community Ministries. That has been rescheduled for February 27th. That is a Sunday. It'll be between the worship services that Sunday morning. There'll be more information in the weeks ahead about that if you are interested in helping put together those snack packs for Trinity Ministries. February 20th, we are starting a new uh, Sunday night uh, study. Janice Gallagher and I will be leading a spiritual gifts discovery workshop. If you've ever wondered uh, where could I possibly serve in the life and ministry of the church, this is a great time to come and explore how God has created and gifted you to participate in the ministry of the church. We'll have a time to uh, do some scripture study, what the Bible tells us about spiritual gifts, uh, inventory where you can explore what some of your gifts might be, and then a time to dream together, how could you possibly use those gifts in ministry? We'll start February 20th at five o'clock in the church parlor. If you'd like to participate in that study, uh, email me and let me know about your interest so I can be sure we have enough resources for everybody. There are more ministries you can find out about through our church website. You can always go there for more information. Coming up in February is our next consignment sale. If you would like to participate in that, whether you want to consign or be a volunteer, uh, go to our website. There's a link there. You can sign up uh, if you want to work or be a consigner. This is a great time for us to reach out and build connections with people who might be new to our community or people who just don't have a church family and let them know of how they will be welcomed and accepted here at St. James. Thank you for all you do to support these and other ministries. Thank you for your financial contributions as well. If you would like to make a gift to St. James, you can do that through our church website, or you can always mail a check into our church office. As we continue to worship together today, may God's Spirit speak to you of God's love for you and how God has called you and equipped you to share that love with others.
now let us unite our hearts and minds in prayer for those in our community. For David Boyd, Dick Gerald, Rhett McGee, Jane Neal, Larry Stallings, Anne Wadley, and Catherine Wells. And we extend our Christian love and sympathy to Jackie Brown on the death of her sister, Mary Callista Angier Ward. Let us go to God in prayer. God of prophets and apostles, you call us to restore that which is broken and to proclaim your vision of a world made new. Create in us new hearts and strong voices as we pray. We pray for those who have been anointed or chosen as leaders of people, that they may attend to the voices of their people and be guided by you. We pray for pastors and teachers of the church, that they may faithfully interpret your word for others. We pray for those who are poor and in need of assistance, and for ourselves, that we may open our hearts to the cries of the needy. We pray for those who are captives of war and victims of violence. May we bring them good news, both in word and deed. We pray for those with physical challenges and spiritual struggles. Make us agents of healing and hope. We pray for those who are oppressed by powers beyond their control. Give them courage to work and give us courage to set them free. God of us all, make us the body of the risen Christ, united in all our diversity. Animate us by your Holy Spirit, that together we may work toward your coming kingdom. We pray all of these things in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. scripture reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It continues where we left off last week as Paul continues to talk about what it means to be the church, to be connected to one another and each of us using our gifts in service to one another and to the greater community. Before hearing today's scripture reading, let us unite our hearts and minds in prayer. God, through the gift of your Spirit, you cause these words of Scripture to be recorded and remembered. As we hear them today, may your same Spirit open our ears, our minds, that we might hear what you are speaking to us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. 
For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and we were made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This image of the church as the body of Christ is my favorite image of the church. It reminds us of our connection to one another and how we are jointly connected to Christ. How we each need one another. Paul makes it very plain for us. He, he uses something that is easily for any of us to imagine. Imagine if your foot said to your eyes, I don't need you, what you would walk into. Imagine if your ears said, I don't need those hands. It's a humorous image that Paul is drawing up for us, yet how often we behave that way, not just in the church, but in our general life, as if we forget just how connected we are. That's one of the things I think the pandemic has reminded us, how much we really are connected and dependent on one another in ways that Paul couldn't even imagine in his day. The supply chain issues we're dealing with are global. And because of something not being available across the world, we are still struggling to find it here in our own local community. This past week, we celebrated the birthday of Martin Luther King, remembering his life and legacy. And on that holiday, I spent some time rereading some of my, my favorite um, quotes and sermons of King. And I came across one that I hadn't turned back to for several years, but it's actually something King worked into many of his sermons and a couple of his writings. He says, we must all learn to live together as brothers or we will perish as fools. We are tied together in a single garment of destiny, caught 
in an inescapable network of mutuality. And whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. For some strange reason, I cannot be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. This is the way God's universe is made. This is the way it is structured. Uh, again, that was a favorite passage of King. He worked it into a lot of his speaking. And it is a beautiful commentary on what Paul is saying in this latter half of chapter 12 in 1 Corinthians, of how we are connected. Paul is talking specifically about the church. King extends it to how we as humankind are connected. It's a wonderful reminder that though we may think of King as someone who is concerned about civil rights or voting rights, he was motivated and acted out of the reality. At heart, he was a Baptist preacher, one who allowed the scriptures to shape him and to influence the way he looked at the world and called us to look at one another. We are connected. We are dependent on one another. We are interdependent. And that is so true in the life of the church. We can never be the church God has called us to be until each one is operating out of their giftedness, uh, using what God has given them in service to the community. That means some of us need to have some pride in what God has given us and be willing to step forward and offer it. That's some of what we were talking about last week, how each of us has something to contribute. But there's also a note of humility in that. We need to remember that none of us is the church on our own. None of us has everything that is needed we rely on one another. Years ago, I was at a church conference and I saw someone with this shirt that kind of intrigued me. It was a gathering of about 2,500 people who were most of them pastors, some other church workers. And the shirt on the front said, I don't go to church. The person happened to be walking towards me, and after he passed, I turned around, and sure enough, there was a message on the back, and it read, I am the church. And I kind of like that sentiment. I think what it's trying to convey is that church isn't so much about going to a place and, and being in a certain place at a certain hour on Sunday morning, but we are called to be the church in the world. The one thing I think the shirt got wrong is we can never do church alone. Church is a plural verb, if you will. We are the church together because we are dependent on one another and connected to one another, even though we may sometimes be separate, even though many hours during the week we may feel like we are on our own, we are still connected to one another. And nobody's gift is more important or more valued than any other. So I was thinking about this image this week, I remembered a story that is often shared in my extended family. When my grandfather retired, my father's father, they lived up in Newport, Rhode Island. And when he retired, he took a position at their local church. He was the church sexton. He would open and close the church. He would be sure the boiler was working, particularly in the winter months up in New England. He would be sure things were neat and in order before people came in for worship on Sundays. In exchange for that work, he and my grandmother uh, lived in a house right next to the church, free of rent. When my grandfather took that job, for some reason it became a habit that he would stand outside of the doors to the church and greet people as they were coming in. 
and then be there as they were leaving after church was over. The tradition in that church was the priest, like often happens in our church, would be standing at the door as people left on Sunday morning. And at some point in time, one of the other members of the church was meeting with the priest and just made a joke about how my grandfather, John, was the last person he would greet on Sundays and the first person he would greet. And for some reason, it just angered the priest. And he called my grandfather in and just told him that he he was not supposed to be the last person people saw on Sunday morning. The priest wanted to be the last one to greet people and to bless them as they were leaving the building. My grandfather didn't say anything, but the next week, mysteriously, the boiler wasn't working in the sanctuary. I think the week after that, my grandfather lost that job, but it was his gentle reminder that each of us has something to contribute to the ministry of the church. Think about the people that go into making the ministries that we participate in just here at St. James happen and how dependent we are on those who do the cleaning and preparing the bulletin, folding the bulletins, all those little things that we just show up and expect to be in place. Are the ones who pull out the tables and set up the chairs for one of our meals, are the ones who stay till the last chair is put away afterwards. We all have something to contribute. And each person's gift is vital and needed, and not one is higher than the other. That was a situation Paul was dealing with with the church in Corinth. Some people thought they had one particular gift that made them better than, more than, more important than the other Christians there. And Paul's reminding them as he's reminding us that because we all are connected in Christ, we are gifted. But that means all the gifts are equal. We are all dependent in the end on the grace of Jesus Christ. And we live in and through that grace. Thanks be to God. Amen.
as you go out to be God's church in the world. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The countenance of the Lord rise upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.